be conscious of the environment and do our bit so that we can all enjoy a healthier environment in the long run and promise the next generations a safer life. Surbhi Bhatia. So let's give a big hand to Surbhi for the wonderful life. Thank you, Shaili. Indeed, Surbhi's ideas tell us how we can bring about a significant difference if we all come together. Now we will have a question-answer session. Uh, you can all ask questions to the speakers you've heard so far. curious to know what you heard that struck you. So what did you hear that particularly had heart or meaning for you or it struck you? Anybody? The Ward's question or Sadananji, which is his Indian name, a question to Well, in brief, I would say that uh, I've made a career of failing my way to success. I think failure is very important. I love what you said. You described your failures, which all led you to the direction that you wound up taking. And from that is this idea uh, that there is no failure, there is only giving up. That's the only failure. If you look at Nelson Mandela, for example, can you imagine being in jail for 30 plus years, going in as a uh, person that was considered a terrorist and a pariah on society, and coming out as the president of the country? You, know, you couldn't write a story like that that anybody would believe if it didn't happen. In my own experience, it was failure that pushed me to look deeper. When I was in my early 20s, I owned a business. Uh, and through a series of, of circumstances, I learned that life was bigger and stronger than I was. And just because I, had a good, I, I thought I had a good idea and that I thought I was a good person, that life would somehow cooperate with me. And in the getting knocked down piece of that, I started to turn inward. I realized that I didn't really know what I needed to know. College didn't really teach me how to deal with life when life was difficult. And at that point, I began to look at what could I do to transform my own consciousness and bring about a sense of inner peace? And actually, that was when I attended the lecture by Chinmayananda and began a study there. And later, I met another Indian yoga teacher by the name of Baba Haridas, and I began to practice yoga and meditation. And so, in a step by step process, for which I will ever be indebted to this country because it originated here. I began a process of self-discovery that led me then uh, to the work that I do today. So for the last 30, almost 35 years, I've been building uh, a yoga center in America and a, a children's school in America. And we also have a children's school and an orphanage here uh, in India near Hardwar. So it's very surprising the way life turns out. And without those failures, without getting knocked down and, and developing a little bit of a humility, uh, I don't think I would have had the wonderful life that I've had so far. So thank you for that question. Um, good afternoon to the panel and everybody present over here. My question is for Ishita. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate you for the work you have done so far. because it, needs a great courage to stand and deliver these sort of things, especially in a society which is driven by more over economic values or bottom of the line. 
So my question is that what really inspires you daily in the morning that okay I have to work and I have to make a difference for the society because even uh, joining School of Inspired Leadership I face a lot of questions that uh, it's a new institute, what they are teaching, it might not be relevant. How you will relate these things in a business industry wherever, wherever you will work. So I just want to know your perspective about it. Thank you very much. As I was just saying earlier, a lot of the thoughts that I share are not ones that I can I can claim originality for. I've worked with a lot of young people over the years who have, um, I think, really challenged a lot of my own understandings. I think there are two things. One, there is a certain part of why I do what I do which is incredibly selfish, and it feeds me. Um, I'm happy. I think so. It would be completely wrong for me to say that what inspires me is the fact that in, in a certain sense I think that what I'm doing is charitable. I can tell you that I get much more sometimes in my job than I honestly think I'm able to give in the amount that I would need to, to, to balance that out. Having said that, I think for me the biggest the biggest kick um, is, is got less to do with the programs and more to do with the people. You know, we work with... Uh, we work with about 150 to 200 young people in a year, and I work particularly with a team of uh, 20 young people and staff. And in our organization, these people change every year. And I ca cannot explain to you the joy in where somebody is when they come, when they join, in terms of the aspirations and the ideas they have, and the, the people they blossom into by the time that they've left. And I think that for me, seeing those, those people changes or those people connects is the most important thing in our work. And I love the fact that I'm part of an ecosystem that can enable that for somebody else. In terms of, I think, the challenges, I completely relate to what you're saying because for the first six years of the work that I was doing, um, there was no family agreement around what I was doing. There was no understanding of it. Um, there was a lot of questioning, a lot of fights. But I think that if you believe in something, you have to be willing to wear through a little bit of that. And I think in time, if you communicate with the people that you love, and that's one thing that my family and I did, even at the point in time where we disagreed intensely on what I was doing, um, is that we kept the communication channels open. We kept talking about it. You know, It was not like I slammed the door and said, I won't talk to you because you don't understand me. And eventually, it began to make sense to them. So I think that there are also some days where you just... You have to believe in that gut somewhere that tells you that this is what's right for me. Um, and in time, you will find people who understand and agree and empathize, and people who will challenge you, which will give you a chance to look at yourself. That's what worked for me. So my question is to Ishita. Like you work with a lot of young people. So my biggest question, what do you think plagues them more, ignorance or indifference? <coughs> Why? It's hard for a young person to be plagued by ignorance because when you learn something, you don't know something. There's a reason they say ignorance is bliss. Um, I think that sometimes what, what really hurts young people is a feeling of helplessness. And I think you can get that helplessness in many ways. It could be personally, where you are really trying to do something in your life and you feel that nobody believes you. Or it could be that you're really passionate about wanting to do something. And I think the worst feeling in the world is when you think you're alone. And I think that the first step is to be able to give people a sense of reassurance that irrespective of how hard it is or what it is, that they're not alone. And I think that when people have that sense of comfort, you know, um, like we see in our organization that there should be one person, uh, whether it's in the organization or outside of your family or whoever you consider your family, uh, that there should be one person who can be your emotional support. And I think that when you give people that sense of security and safety, the fear of not failing or the fear of failing is not something that will stop people from sort of trying things. But that I find is a very big demotivator. Because if you think you're alone, then you're fighting battles within yourself. It really isn't even about the world outside. It's just you in your mind. And I think that's sometimes a very discouraging place to be at. In a normal middle class family, 
the indians are born in such a way that their life is so stereotyped you know like uh, they are going from college then they are doing their post graduation in uh, in such a way how do they adopt to the circumstances if they want to become an entrepreneur like they don't want to spend their life working for someone else legacy then how should they have a setup of mind like that in india you hardly have any research opportunities 